I very recently got these liquid pigments from Green Stuff World and I'm kind of intrigued by them so I actually wanted to make a video dedicated to these liquid pigments. Now I tend to not do sort of specific reviews um, but I saw these in the game store some while back and I didn't get them and then I thought about it and then I got them. First of all, like liquid pigment um, in my head, all paints are liquid pigments. Um, that being said, I sort of get the point. It's supposed to be like a pigment, like this dry powdery stuff, um, only liquid. <sighs> Which is, you know, I, I was trying to think about it and it's just weird. Like the reason I use pigments is because they're dry. I use them because they're a dust and you can sort of put it here and there on a miniature or on terrain and stuff like that. And the fact that it is dust means that it sort of acts like dust and you can work with it in a completely different way than if something's liquid. And then all of a sudden there's liquid pigments. And what's that all about? So I got this box, which is called Rust. It contains six liquid pigments. And there's a dark rust, medium rust, light rust, orange rust, a verdigris and a turquoise oxide. They've also got, I think, another two boxes, which is like, I think they're called like dirt. Or is it just the one? I'm not sure. And there she goes. It's, it's heavy with pigment. And so the pigment I'm guessing these need to be shaken kind of well and sort of stirred around um, because the pigment sort of separates a little bit from the rest of the liquid. And I put mixing balls in this, but I'm sort of starting to wonder if there wasn't already a mixing ball in there because it sort of sounds like there's two in here now, but I, I'm not sure. I have this book where I uh, got all my paints in here and, and the name. And, you know, and so I opened all the bottles up and I brushed out the paints and just to have it in my book. And I realized that they sort of, they act strange. They act a bit on their own. You can see that there's these sort of holes and dots everywhere. And that's sort of how the, the paint, it's done it by itself, you know. First step was just to test them out and see um, what happens when I paint on a primed surface. I found this in the basement, I think for a very long time ago, I was built, I don't really know what I was doing, but I took a piece of this tent and it now looks like this, but I primed uh, one side white with the uh, Corax white from Games Workshop and the other one with Chaos Black from Games Workshop. And I streaked out all the paints on there, undiluted. As you can see, there's a huge difference between what happens on the black side and the white side. Uh, I guess the, the white pigment, you know, it creates a texture of its own. And, but, at, in, you know, yeah, you can see it with your, with your own eyes, but the, the paint really, like if you look at the black side, it's just run, it doesn't really stick on there. It's just sort of floating around. And after it dried, I tried to add like a little bit of the, the medium rust on the dark rust and a little bit of the light rust on the medium. You know, I added some layers on there just to see sort of what happens. And like on the white side, it's it's like a, I don't know, it, it's like a sort of see-through kind of paint, I guess. Obviously it works really different on the black and then it does on the white. But I can also see that yeah, I mean, I'm using a brush. I'm using a brush throughout this tutorial. No, it's not a tutorial. It's a review. Is it a review? It's just me trying it out, like initial thoughts. Like where I've added layer upon layer upon layer, uh, like so it's the dark and then the medium and then the light and then the orange. I mean, it sort of looks like rust, um, but I think one needs to sort of maybe stipple a bit more, make it a little bit more random with the brush and not just sort of streak it out because the top layer does really sort of cover the layer underneath. But from there I went on and I thought, oh, well, let's just uh, try this on some miniatures to start with. So I was working on these orcs and uh, specifically the weapons on the orcs. And I wanted this feeling of sort of rust, but also on just in the dark areas that are sort of pointing downwards. 
uh, so that it could be sort of just orange light or it could be rust. No one really knows. It's fantasy, right? And I'd never used these at all. This was my first sort of touch and go with this. So I went for the light rust and I diluted it pretty heavily, probably 50-50 with water. And it's sort of gradually building them up, probably four or five layers of, the, of this rust. And it has a tendency to sort of pull or puddle up, um, which isn't really something favorable, I don't think. But doing it sort of layer upon layer like this, you can actually sort of, when it's dried, you can actually, it's got a, I mean, it's, it's pigment. Whatever, you know, is there, is, is, it's got a pigment feel to it. It's got sort of a matte, it's got a texture. And for this application, it worked out really nicely. I kept on going on the same, on the same miniatures because they've got sort of, there's supposed to be some rust on the armor. And this time I went sort of, uh, I started with the, with the dark rust and then the medium and then the light rust and then all the way up to the orange rust on all these sort of small spikes and things, bolts, whatever they've got sticking out of the armor. And these areas were really small and I mainly got just the pools or the puddles and I didn't really get sort of a gradual thing happening. Um, I think I think this might have been just too small a detail. I mean, it's, in some places it looks really nice, um, but I, th I think I'm thinking this looks better probably on larger surfaces because it was difficult to handle and you get this sort of a ring, the pool, and when it dries, sort of there's more pigment stuck in the ring than in the middle of it. And, you know, maybe I need to practice more, but probably on small areas like this, I would probably have been better off to do it with just regular paint that's got sort of a rusty color to it than actual liquid pigment. So now that I've tried it on just two small surfaces that were already painted, I wanted to see what it looked like on a zenithal priming and more specifically on the base, which is pretty much why I got this set. So these bases have been zenithal primed, as I said, and I covered all of them with the dark rust first, 50-50 diluted with water. So while working with this dark rust, it sort of, uh, the thought struck me that they act like, imagine how a wash works where it gets dark in the recesses. This feels sort of like an opaque, if you want to call it that, wash, like the pigment sticks in all the recesses. So whatever's sticking out doesn't get touched by the pigment and this sort of goes down into the recesses, making them brighter, I guess. And I figured I might as well use the whole set for everything, just paint the bases only using these paints. So I went for the turquoise oxide and the verdigris, the blue and the green, for all the stones and the rocks and all of that kind of stuff. Um, by the way, I just, in between there, I just painted up some details on the skulls and stuff. Just, yeah, um, trying to be thorough here, you know. But anyway, uh, I kind of laid off the verdigris pretty soon and just stuck to the turquoise oxide, this blue on all the rocks. I'm thinking, you know, these orcs, they're in a sort of desolate, deserty kind of a place. There's, everything's red and the rocks are blue. Uh, you know, I, I, why not, you know? And um, it looks kind of cool. The, I mean, both of these, they, they're kind of alive. They do what they want. It, the, the turquoise oxide didn't really stick to these, um, there's rocks, sharp rocks sticking out of the ground and it acted in the same kind of way as it's doing here. It's just sort of puddling up and maybe if I would have painted more layers on there, maybe I could have covered more, but I just, I just left it. I figured let's just go for it and let's just be random. Yeah. So after that, I went on to the medium rust and same, like all of these throughout this, this base thing, I pretty much diluted everything 50, 50 ish, maybe not quite uh, with water. But I went on with medium rust on on the on the earth again, trying to leave the other like whatever's in shade. I didn't get anything on there, but otherwise, pretty much just trying to get this on randomly wherever stuff is sticking out. And after that, I went in for a dry brush, and and now it sort of started to feel right when you know things were popping a bit more. And I just moved on. I you know light rust, trying to use it sort of like a highlight. 
and then sort of the orange rust in just a few spots like the absolute sort of tips of things and um, I mean I've got to say that it's I'm really glad I bought these paints for this purpose because I was doing this really fast um, even though there's a couple of steps there's a couple of you know there's like four layers of, of the, the earth and there's a dry brush but just the way these sort of act I've still got sort of the zenith oil priming shining through here and there and the rest of it is sort of acting a little bit randomly it does have you know a pigmenty texture afterwards like the dusty kind of a feel and yeah I you know I think it looks really awesome as a a sort of dust type desert red ochre thing and it looks absolutely perfect for my orcs I think the result that for me I can see on these bases is exactly what I was sort of after and hoping for is there's a randomness and actually a kind of fast way of working I don't really have to pay attention all that much I'm just sort of slopping these paints on and everything sort of comes alive by itself I don't have to go in and sort of lay paint details or anything like that the zenithal priming is doing its bit and the pigments are sort of it looks more real and alive and natural apart from the fact that they're you know the rocks are blue and you know there's a big honking green orc standing on it so this got me into um, painting terrain and now i say you know the, these uh, these are supposed to be rust i just decided not to you know i tried a little bit of rust i think when it comes to from what i can see on my test um on the black which is you know i didn't really go down that alley all that much more but i can imagine if you have a larger vehicle or if you have say um something else a container a a drum that's you know supposed to be an oil drum or something like that and you smear all this on and sort of stipple and do a little bit of sort of paying attention to it and then maybe um, use like a chipping medium when you paint the next layer so you've got this stuff underneath maybe something like that would be awesome or just if you want something enormously rusty um, but anyway I went on to terrain like I have this um, huge uh, not huge I built this thing for for uh, out of trash for something called the trash bash and I figured all the earth is now going to be uh, red pigment earth done exactly not exactly probably exactly Hello. in the same manner as can this the um, oh, thank you. okay so what I, I'll be honest with you and say I was just saying that I hadn't actually tried it on the on the build because I figured it'll act like the bases and I can just put this in there later on I'll paint it later on and there'll be more content you know for this video but what actually happened is when I started to paint it I was sort of even I was a bit amazed um, over how well this worked on larger surfaces and I, I did start painting the the, the earth uh, doing the the dark rust and then the medium rust and you know I went in and painted bits and pieces here and there and then I thought you know this is working out really well I need to get more of these so I got on my bike and um, went to my local friendly game store and I had two choices I'll, well I ended up with the dust there's also an earth um, this dust one has got a black soot a white dust a dark industrial dust industrial dust dark green dust light green dust and I just figured like these different shades would maybe suit me better because then I could paint the entire mountain with with these uh, uh, industrial dust ones because they apparently seem to be gray and the earth one was more browns and I didn't really want any browns in this build and you know I sort of I couldn't go for both that sort of over uh, spending really so I got it and got back on my bike and kept on painting and you know it it just works out so well 
on on terrain and on a, a like larger surfaces uh, going back to the rust doing the rust on these sort of sheets of metal on here with these larger surfaces i could sort of do more of a sort of stippling technique which worked so much better uh, on these rust pigments um, i covered pretty much the entire mountain with sort of these gray ones it sort of turned out that um, they've got a white pigment in them so what happens is sort of when i watered it down it gets sort of uh, too many pools here and there the white pigment actually just ends up in the crevices which makes things look a little bit weird but i sort of made it work what i found so nice with these liquid pigments on terrain is one thing because they kind of see through so my zenithal priming you can see through that and they blend together really nicely like the different shades the diff like the different from the dark rust up to the orange and same with the other kit and I think the best thing is because I covered the entire thing with liquid pigments and they just blend together really nicely you can't really see where you've stopped painting or started painting there's no sort of brush strokes and things like that especially the with these dust ones some of them I think would probably work better in a sort of airbrush situation um, getting a thin coat of that sort of well, I mean mainly because of the white pigment because when that pulls up you pretty much just get a little bit of a puddle of white but I mean back to the to the to the build or to the paint job I covered everything with the liquid liquid pigments uh, painted the stones gray black the the soot black I mean it's almost like using a a black wash only um, I don't know when it dries it it doesn't look like a dried wash it's it's more natural it's got more of a natural feel to it um, but I covered the whole thing and then I went in and painted details with with regular paints um, I repainted the roofs that I originally thought they were going to be blue I used the blue uh, liquid pigment I did them in another manner painted wooden details and you know did some dry brushing all over and just worked my way through it and then I went back to the liquid pigments. So I had the orange, I had the blue, I had the green. I also had the white and the light gray, which is, you know, from, it's, it's called uh, industrial dust. I'm calling it light gray. And I used these to highlight. And I mean, once more, I even ended up like dry, using the white for highlights, like dry brushing, because, once more, I didn't really get any pens, uh, brush strokes. Um, it just sort of, you know, if I'm not, if I haven't got too much on the brush, um, I mean, it just sort of naturally just highlights everything. And yeah, and I kept on working on, on these metal sheets. I thought, you know, they look really rusty. It, I mean, I'm, I've got to say, I think it's absolutely cool how well this looks as a rust effect okay on bigger surfaces it's like if if you want rust effects on bigger surfaces try this out but i thought they were a bit flat and so i went in with some of the other ones um the blue and the green uh, the different oxides whatever you want to call it and just you know added some some details here and there and yeah I don't want to say, I'm just kind of stoked how well this worked. Once I was done with the liquid pigments, with the highlighting with liquid pigments, I, um, I went in and added some regular dry pigments because I just really like that sort of dusty feel. And yeah, I mean, what you can see now is, I mean, incorporating these paints, I'm not gonna, just going to say incorporating. Most of this build is done with painted with liquid pigments all the stonework all these things um i mean it just looks so natural and i would not have been able to do that without these liquid pigments the icing on the cake was using this white sort of as a dry brushing um on top of the rocks and the stones and things like that and it was just so smooth and it yeah you can you can hear that i'm kind of excited so um Apart from the earlier things I said in this video about other applications for terrain, 
um, I mean, just just go for it. Is so especially starting with the sort of Zenithal Prime and then just using these. I know buying three boxes might be kind of extreme, um, but um, it was just so fast and forgiving to work with these on terrain. Now back to the other guy again. So I literally only spent like um, three or four days with these paints and normal circumstances I would say you know get to know the paints before you make a video about it but I was just sort of so surprised with that they were actually something different um, I've never tried to paint that sort of acts in this manner of like but this stuff is just weird it just flows out on the black and then doesn't on the white and I can I can understand why but or how but why and then um, I'm guessing working with them for quite a while longer I'll figure out more use of them but definitely on like on the bases I was really when I sat there doing that first base um, and on the axe turned out really well and I could not have done that uh, with regular pigments but the whole thing confuses me like if yeah if I would never have tried to do it with reg regular pigments so it's it's just a new or a different type of paint and it's it's going to be a go-to on my bases I wanted to make this video just because I know that they're new on the market and there might be more people, you might be someone like me that's seen them and gone, well, you know, so what's a liquid pigment? And I thought I'd try and just help you out with just this brief introduction into a few areas of using it. But there you go. Thanks for watching. And uh, please like and subscribe and, you know, give me money on Patreon or whatever you feel like. And um, have a nice day.